Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Ride Burnout. This board features Ride's twin extra camber, which is just twin cam rocker. So you have a very minimal rocker in the tip and the tail, and then an abundance of camber through the middle. That rocker in the tip of the tail is gonna give you ease of entry in and out of turns, as well as a better sweet spot for pressing, but that camber underfoot is gonna give you all the load, pop, snap, and drive of this board. This board's available in 149, 152, 155, 158, 154 wide, and 157 wide. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a day that was a mix of overcast and blue skies. You had high winds at times, chop chunder, warmer temps. I found some hot pow left over, perfect hero snow corduroy, kind of just a mix of all spring conditions. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this board is stiff. I mean stiff. This is a very high-end twin plank of a board. You have very minimal flex in the tip and the tail where that rocker is, and then it's just stiff through the midsection. The torsional flex is very minimal, and when you do engage it, it rebounds really quick. Now, with the stiffness of this board, you get a very stable ride. It pushes through chop and chunder with ease, and even if it's having an issue, it won't let you know. It skips across big ruts. The only reason that you would get bucked from this board is the reactivity of it because you weren't prepared for it. There's a real unique pop to this board. If you aggressively try to load it up and then roll back and snap, you're gonna get in the air, but it's nothing great. But if you wait till the very last minute and almost skate-like pop it, where you just roll back really quick and engage it, you're gonna be able to boost. This is a board that if you're spending the time to be calculated with it, it dissipates that rebound. But if you're very last minute with your load, you're gonna get more out of it. Now, when it comes to jumps, skip the small stuff, head right to the big line. That's where this board's gonna be most at home. You can let the lip throw you or you can load it up at the last minute and pop and you're gonna be able to boost. Small stuff, it doesn't care for it. It wants bigger features. Due to the flex of this board, you do less pressing when you're buttering and more leveraging, meaning that you're putting all your weight either into the nose or the tail and you're just sort of rolling into that rocker to get it to lock in and the whole time it's gonna fight you. You're gonna get the most minimal butter out of this thing. And when it comes to jibbing, unless you're a X Games slope style course rider, you're probably gonna hate this thing. It just does not have a sweet spot that really presses. You're aggressively just leveraging your weight and it's kind of just going up on the nose or up on the tail. And when you go sideways, it's a balance board act. It doesn't cradle, it's just balancing on the feature. There is an immense amount of power out of this board. It has a very smooth edge to edge power transmission. I don't mean quick and nimble, I just mean smooth. You go to turn and it engages and it just sort of rolls in. You do engage it from outside the front foot, but you drive it all from the center of the board back through the tail. And you have to be aggressive with how you drive your knee and load that camber section to get it to roop out. Overall, this is a board that when you wanna lay a trench, you can absolutely lay a trench with it, no questions asked, but you have to bring your A game to steer. Those short, tight, quick turns, they are smooth with their initiation, but you're putting a lot of effort to get that thing to lock in on edge and stay locked in. It's really more of those medium carves or deep hard carves where this board truthfully shines. Who's this board for? Someone that's heavyweight that wants a hard charging twin for freestyle and carving use, or someone that wants a super stiff, aggressive twin. So I rode this thing in a 155 and it gave me a workout. I mean, a total ass kicking workout. This board let me know it was in charge and I was going along for the ride. I do like the tip shape of this board. It just is very reminiscent of a late 90s, early 2000 deck. But what I don't like is just how stiff this thing is. You have to leverage, not press, leverage your weight over the nose or tail to just get it to engage. This is a very aggressive board. And having ridden the old Burnout and knowing that it was aggressive, that was softer than this one. This thing is just some next level flex. Not a fan of it, but if you're looking for a high-end stiff freestyle twin that's mostly camber dominant, this is not a bad option. Comparable boards, the Karua Auto Plus, the Amplid UNW8, the Nitro T3. 
Binding recommendations, the Ride A9, the Nitro Phantom, the Union Atlas Pro. This has been my review of the Ride Burnout. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Averin Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Thank mm -hmm. you.